what does it mean to feel happy? What does it mean to feel anxious? How do I know I'm feeling frustrated and overstimulated? We have a big disconnect from our thinking brain and our feeling body. And a lot of what I love is the SEL push to label emotions and to have more emotional vocabulary. But a lot of our kids also struggle with something called alexithymia, where they cannot label their emotion, even if they experience it, or they have very delayed processing. The benefits of doing a somatic check-in are making sure that we are able to address and identify emotions that are really hard to figure out you're having in the first place, especially in developing brains and bodies. And therefore you can use the strategies that already a lot of our schools are teaching us to use like a meta moment or to stop and think or to use a break or another strategy. Take a moment and, and start modeling it yourself. Um, I think at any age, the biggest thing we can do is to start narrating and thinking aloud. I would say so many of our teachers are amazing at thinking aloud in general, whether it's a think aloud for a book, thinking aloud for math, thinking aloud for social studies, thinking aloud and modeling for your own emotions and shoot to do it at like a couple times a day. Kids often will start to go like, what? Like that's, what are you, what are you? And then they will pick it up. That's the easiest like thing to try immediately takes like no practice, no effort, no prep. It looks different depending on the age group that you're dealing with and the population, culture is a big factor, language is a big factor too. Um, but I'd be like, wow, I'm feeling really tired. Like, I think I need to sit down and drink water. Oh, I feel like, I feel like my chest is tight. I feel like my back kind of hurts and my legs don't feel like moving anymore. Mm, I'm thinking that maybe, mm, let me see, how does my stomach feel? Oh, I think I might be really, really hungry right now. And that's kind of making me cranky, cranky. And I would just kind of like think out loud. With older kids, it would be a little different. I'd be like, y'all, I'm feeling really irritated right now. Everything is just, mm, 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 mm. And I know I feel that way because everything, everything you're saying is just making me feel more mad, right? And so it sounds different depending on the age group. And then we wanted to, to go from modeling to kids checking in with themselves. So sometimes I would use a hand um, and I'm kind of like scanning. I'm like, I'm going to start from the top of my head. Yeah. And with older kids, you're like, yeah, that's going to sound silly. It's fine. We're going to be silly up in here. It's okay. With younger kids, it's a different vibe. Like we're going to be silly. That's okay. But it's, it's going to help me make a good decision. With some kids, we'll use like a piece of yarn. I've even done um, some kids at like a flashlight and we like take a flashlight and we go down our body like that. And so the more modeling and narration we did that, the more reinforcing we did it, like, hey, good job. Like I noticed you using your tools before you got really, really upset. Um, and it's okay to get upset, but you really are working on checking in with your body. The more success we were seeing we were having. For a lot of kids, a lot of our kids who are neurodivergent, and I mean the whole umbrella of neurodivergence, whether it's for trauma related reasons or for neurological reasons, there is a big disconnect between being able to feel a thing somatically and to label that feeling. So the more we're bridging that gap by explicit modeling, it is a form of instruction that is going to pay off uh, with kids being able to make better choices. Uh, so for our classrooms, it's more collaborative, it's calmer, kids feel more confident and more uh, like self-possessed of who they are and their bodies.